Hello guys, welcome to another Science Hard video. Now what we look at today are food tests, which is part of the B3 module. So this is going to be about testing for proteins, for lipids, for sugars and for starch. Now all I'm going to do to start with is prepare my sample. Now I've got three samples to show you today. So I've got biscuit, I've got bread, white bread, and I've got some cheese. Now I'm going to start with the biscuit. I would start with the biscuit first and then I'll look at the, the bread and then the cheese. And the first thing I have to do with this is actually crush it up in a pestle and mortar. This is your pestle and mortar. Pestle and the mortar. So the mortar is the bowl. So what I'm going to do is pour my biscuit into my pestle and mortar. And I'm just going to crush the biscuit up. Now I'm not bashing it with my pestle. I'm just applying gentle pressure with it, just to gradually break down the biscuit. And I want to just get it to a fine crumb. Now there's more biscuit here that I'm, that I'm actually going to use. I'm just going to take a spatula of biscuit. And what I'm going to do with that spatula of biscuit, there we go, so you can see that we've got a fine crumb now. I'm going to put a spatula of biscuit into a test tube. So I've got my three test tubes here. These are for my three samples. So I've got my biscuit, it's going to be my bread, and it's going to be my cheese. So I'm just going to take a test tube and put a spatula of my crushed biscuit into the test tube. At this point here, I need to add some water. So I'm going to add my distilled water. That'll be plenty. I'm just going to put a bung on it, and I'm just going to give it a shake. And all I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to put it into a water bath. So I've pre-boiled a kettle here, so I'm going to just put the water into this large beaker here. Now, I would normally, in the lab, and what you guys would normally do is actually use a water bath that's preset at determined temperature, It'd be around 55 degrees, 60 degrees. But just so you guys can see it clearly, this large beaker really helps for us to see that. So that's my preparation of my biscuit sample. And effectively all I do now is do exactly the same for my bread and my cheese into the beaker, into the test tubes, and then I'll put those into the beaker. I'll leave those for around five minutes, and then I'm gonna come back to them, and I'm gonna do my four different tests, which will be in these test tubes here. Okay, right, so we've left these in here for just over five minutes and now I'm going to filter those solutions. So I'm going to take the bread one here and I'm going to set up a funnel with a filter paper and I'm going to just pull this and filter it all into one test tube. Once that's filtered through, I'm going to then transfer the approximate equal portion into each of those four test tubes. Now the four test tubes I've got here, I'm using Benedict solution we've got here. I'm using Burret solution here, iodine and then ethanol. Now the Benedict which we'll do first, that's going to be testing for glucose. Now with this one here, I'm going to add five drops of the Benedict and then I'm going to give it a shake and I'm going to put it into another water bath which will be this little beaker here. With the Burret solution, I'm going to just add five drops and give it a shake. Same with the iodine and same with the ethanol. So we're testing for our glucose, for our proteins, for our starch, and then for our lipids. So that's filtered all the way through there, so I'm just going to put that to one side, and I'm just gonna transfer over an approximate equal portion into each of the test tubes. So we'll get our Benedict's solution done first because we need to put that into a water bath. So I'm just going to put approximately five drops into the test tube. Okay. Now, what we're looking for with Benedict's solution, it starts off blue, very vibrant blue here. Now I'm going to give it a shake and if, after being in the water bath, it turns into a yellow or orange or even a brick red, we're going to see the presence of glucose in here. So I'm just going to put some hot water in there that I pre-boil. 
and we'll leave that for around about five minutes. Now we're expecting the biscuit to definitely have glucose in, so that should change relatively quickly. Now with this, depending on the colour that we see here, we'll give an indication of how much sugar is in here. So if this goes brick red, that's indicating there is a large percentage of sugar within this big biscuit. And if it goes yellow, slightly less. So we'll just put that to one side for the moment. Now we move on to the next one. So we're testing for proteins here. Now we don't, I'm not going to put this one in a water bath, but again we're just going to put five drops of our burret in there. And we're going to stopper it, give it a shake. Now you can see the colour starts off as a, a, a pale blue. Now if this is going to have, if this is going to have proteins in, it would go like a lilac or a purple, a pale purple or lilac. And that at the moment is showing that there are no proteins within this biscuit, which is what we do expect. The next one we're going to test this one here. So we're going to test for starch. Now I'm going to use iodine for this one. Now iodine starts off as a nice yellow, dark yellow, orange colour. Now if there is presence of starch in this then we should see a blue-black colour, and this should be evident very quickly if there are any starch in here. And we can see immediately, I've added just four drops in there, three or four drops. It was clear from the first drop, I don't even need to really shake this one, it's very, very clear that we've got a dark, like a blue-black, almost black that one. So it's definitely got starch in our biscuit there. So we've seen a positive test for starch, we've seen a negative test for protein, the last one we're going to do is test for our lipids, fats essentially. I'm just going to get some ethanol and I'm going to put a few squirts of the ethanol into here. Now if an emulsion was formed, then we've got a positive test for lipids. So I'm just going to give that a little shake and looking at that, there is no emulsion formed for the biscuit solution. Again, we wouldn't necessarily if, uh, expect that to happen with a biscuit. It's going to have sugars, and it's going to have starch in, but not necessarily fats. With our cheese, however, we may expect a different result. So we're going to leave our biscuit in the beaker for the Benedict solution, and in true Blue Peter style fashion, here's some I prepared earlier. So I'm going to move these ones to one side, and we're going to go through the results of all of our foods that we started off with. So for example, when we look at these solutions here, so we've got, these are all my biscuits, uh, these are my white bread, and this one's here are for my cheese. Now we can see with the biscuit one here, we've got a lovely orange colour here, which is indicating the, the presence that we've definitely got glucose, we've definitely got glucose with this one here. Now with our next test, we saw a negative result for proteins and we saw a positive result for starch and we saw a negative result for our fats. Now moving on to our white bread. So white bread. Now I had a negative test for sugars but when we get to our starch test you'll see quite different. Now for proteins negative test but when we get to starch, as we would expect with bread, we've got a definite positive test there with starch. And a negative test with our fat. Final one, this is our cheese. So we can expect something different here. With our cheese, we've got a negative test for our glucose. So there's a remaining glue here. But this is where we see a positive test for our biorect solution. So that's the first one that we've seen a positive test for. And we've got that lilac, light purple colour there, which is exactly what we'd expect for some cheese. We have a negative result for starch, negative result for starch, and we do have a slight emulsion there for the cheese for the lipid test. So we have a slight result there for an emulsion with the lipid test with the ethanol which we'd expect again for cheese. Now different cheeses are going to have different fat contents, so that may be that this is quite a low fat cheese. So in terms of what you need to remember for this RPA on food tests, you need to remember the colour, obviously the different 
test for each of the different um, food groups. And you need to know the colour before and you need to know the colour afterwards. A must for this particular practical. You need to remember this that you are having to use a water bath um, with your Benedict solution with the test for glucose. You must remember that you need to do that as well. Essentially, that's what we need to do, and that covers the food tests.